Today is the day. It is May 20th. It's a big day and I'm going to explain to you why. But first I want to say welcome to the Raw Food Health Empowerment Podcast. I'm your host, Samantha Salmon, Integrative Nutrition Coach, and I have a special guest with us today, Mitali Deprecasta. Mitali was actually on the 2021 Raw Food Health Empowerment Summit, so you may notice her from there. I just want to give you a little bit of background if you've never met Mitali before. Uh, vegan since 2012, Mitali is the authority creator for vegan, plant-based, ethical, sustainable, B Corp, cruelty-free, green, eco-conscious, and social experts, influencers, and entrepreneurs, helping them put their mission, movement, and message on the map. She's a keynote speaker, owner of The Vegan Publisher, a book consultancy, and the 100% vegan-owned Let's Tell Your Story publishing imprint. She's also the author of the bestseller, The Freedom Master Plan. And today is a special day because she just released the second edition of this book, which details how clients leverage their books to amplify their voices and build unshakable authority. This allows them to attract clients, media attention, investors, donors, and passive income streams while boosting their visibility, sales, and profits. And if this is, sounds exciting to you, then you're definitely going to want to listen to this episode. And also check out the show notes because there's even more on the blog about this. Mitali is now living her life's mission of creating an army of conscious, ethical thought leaders through publishing so together they can change the world one book at a time. And you guys know I'm super passionate about my mission, which is to eradicate type 2 diabetes in this country. And a lot of us need to put our heads together and get to work to make this mission happen. So I'm so excited to have Mitali on the podcast today to talk about how we can use our story and our mess, you know, what has really triggered us in the past to become our best selves and do this work that we're doing to help make um, the world a healthier place, to funnel that into a book and create massive, massive change for a huge impact and a legacy um, that will live on beyond us. So I'm excited to to share her and this conversation with you today. Make sure you pick up her book. All right, well, welcome, Mitali, to the Raw Food Health Empowerment Podcast. Thank you so much for being here again. Thank you so much for having me again. It's an honor. I always think it's one thing to be invited once, uh, but when someone invites you again, you're just like, yes, they must like me. So it's yeah. an honor. Thank you. Yeah, so you were a guest on the Raw Food Health Empowerment Summit, and we talked about um, leveraging a book, you know, as a health coach, and um, you are dropping a new release of your second edition of your book, The Freedom Master Plan, on May 20th. So I'm excited to get into that um, later on in our conversation. I do want to start with how can writing a book help healthy food business entrepreneurs? So like if you actually have um, a restaurant or maybe you are a raw chef, how can writing a book help you? Well, writing a book helps anybody who wants to be seen as an authority or really, you know, the, the, new, the new subtitle for my book is put your message, your movement and mission on the map. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's all about. And I think especially if you are vegan or plant-based, we're quite we're a little bit different to the average entrepreneur sure we want a success, successful business who doesn't want a successful business no one wants a failing business so that we have in common with any entrepreneur or any type of business but what makes us different is we're not just thinking about profits we want to make a great profit of course but we also want to make a difference to the world. We usually have a mission. We believe in a cause, in a movement that is to make the world more plant-based, more healthy, more kinder to the environment, more kinder to other species. You know, it's something we, we all believe in. So why not put that into a book so people know what you stand for? I always say you kind of do that anyway on social media, on your website, you kind of understand, well, most people understand that it's not just what you do, it's why you do it that makes people gravitate towards you, you know, especially in a climate where 
you're one of many. And that is the case now if you're vegan or plant-based. If you were a vegan or plant-based entrepreneur, maybe back in 2006, you just being vegan or plant-based was enough. You know, that made you a differentiation, you know. But now, I've seen this in my small city. I live in a city called Newcastle upon Tyne in the northeast of England. It's quite a small city. Um, and when I became vegan in 2012, there was one vegan restaurant literally one vegan restaurant in the whole city sky apple cafe and i used to go there every week because it was the only vegan restaurant mm -hmm. now sadly sky apple cafe closed down two years ago and the reason they closed down is there's so many vegan and plant-based restaurants in newcastle plus you even have non-vegan restaurants and eateries that offer a vegan menu they just couldn't compete that is the reality that we're facing now. It's, it's a double-edged sword. On the one hand, it's fantastic. It means what we're trying to accomplish in the world is working. Yeah. But on the flip side of it, it does mean that if you're a vegan or plant-based entrepreneur of any kind, whether that's, you know, um, like you said, restaurant owners or whether that's health coaches, nutritionists, just being vegan or plant-based just doesn't cut the mustard anymore. It, you know, oh, I just used a food pun there. I'm quite <laughs> <laughs> I just came out. Um, but it just doesn't cut it really doesn't cut the mustard anymore i'm also i now know four vegan accountants i know two specialist re, uh, research and development tax specialists who are vegan it's even in these niches that you just 10 years ago you there was no vegans in there yeah and now there's vegans in there, so, which is wonderful but yeah the, you know like i said it's a double-edged sword just being vegan or plant-based just isn't enough anymore so what differentiates you well if you become an author that differentiates you um mm -hmm. i remember before the pandemic when i used to do um in-room talks and a little game that i would play with my audience is i'll get them to all stand up and i would say Okay, so I want you to stay standing up if you've got a website. And practically everyone will stay standing up. You might get one or two people, maybe local stores that don't even need a website, then practically everybody will stay standing up. And then I would say, okay, I want you to stay standing up if you have business cards. And again, most people will stay standing up. You might get the odd person who's now got, you know, business cards on their phone and that kind of thing, and they don't use cards anymore. But most people stay standing up. Then I'll say things like, okay, how many of you guys have got social media? Stay standing up if you're using social media for your business. Again, everyone, practically everyone stays standing up. And then as soon as I say, stay standing up if you've written a book, if you're an author. And <laughs> usually everyone sits down. You might get one or two people who stand up. And usually they get an applause. That's the differentiation. When you become an author, there's this elevation that happens. People mm -hmm. see you as an expert among experts that you must really know what you're talking about because you've got something that most people don't have. So I think whatever kind of business you're in, writing a book will help differentiate you from the competition. Yeah. And I, I think too, like you step out as a, as a, as a leader with, fire and passion behind you because like you know what you what you said like I'm, I'm reading a book right now actually on this woman um who started a non-profit she was formerly incarcerated and went through you know she has lived experience and came out of that and wanted to help other women and so she writes this book and the forward of her book is written by michelle alexander and for folks who know she wrote the new jim crow which is a very popular book here in the States about the prison system. And the fact that she has this, so it's not that she has a nonprofit, there's all these nonprofits, right? There's all these these people doing justice work and things, but she is like, she wrote, she wrote a book and it's on Audible. And uh, the Ford is by Michelle, you know, it's like you're, she is now the it person, the, the person that we want to talk to about this. You have lived experience, you have a powerful story. So it's like you are, you are the ambassador for the message, whatever it is you're trying to, you know, convey to the masses that we need to, to move ourselves into the new age, a progressive age. Um, so yeah, there's just so many benefits <laughs> to have in a book really it really is and i'm living proof of that you know mm -hmm. um 
I've been a ghostwriter for a number of years and I only got into consulting and publishing just 18 months ago. And I can't believe that, you know, how far I've come in 18 months. I've published 16 authors already. Many of them are vegan. Um, and I'm now collaborating with a couple of major hitters within the vegan world and we're creating programs together. It just, I don't think it would have happened if I didn't release a book, there is something that, I mean, from my point of view, I guess I did need to release a book. I mean, what kind of book publisher and book consultant doesn't have their own book? So I kind of, I was forced to, but it doesn't matter what kind of industry you're in. Mm -hmm. It really does open doors for you. And um, you kind of go into a, a bit of an exclusive club, you know, and other authors seek you out and they go, oh, you've written a book as well. And yeah, it, it's really, I always say a book will open doors for you. And not only will it open the doors that you want opened, it even opens doors that you didn't even realize were open. Uh, I, I use myself as, as an example, and that will explain why I've created a second edition of my book. So when my book came out last year uh, in March, um, it became a, a bestseller uh, in the UK, USA, and also Canada and Australia, which is fantastic, exactly what I wanted. Now, I've been vegan since 2012. However, it was something I did in my personal life. Um, I've never hidden it. If you went onto my social media or my personal social media profiles, you would see me at various vegan restaurants. So it was never something that I hid. However, it was something I did in my personal life. It didn't encroach into my business my business was well i was a copywriter and a ghostwriter and i wrote for anybody who wanted to hire me um and then when i moved into book publishing and book consulting again i was working with all kinds of entrepreneurs and experts and influencers not specifically vegan ethical plant-based ones my book comes out in march of last year and it did what I expected it to do, which is to get me a ton of new clients, take me to that next level in my business. What I didn't expect is that a group of vegans would find me and start asking me, hey, we think you're amazing. Why why don't you mention that you're vegan in your business? I'm thinking, uh, I never thought of that, you know? And then I went through the whole um, imposter syndrome thing. I started to think, oh my gosh, well, what if I, if I then say I'm a vegan, book consultant and publisher, would that put off non-vegans? Is the market too small? Is it too niche for me? You know, we all go through that thing where we worry that if we nail our colors to the mast, we will put off potential clients or potential customers. Mm -hmm. And then coming through all that and realizing that it's a good thing if someone doesn't want to work with me because I'm vegan, that's their problem. That's not, I don't really see how that's my problem anymore now. Yeah. And ha I've had that personal growth as well over the last year to the point where I've now rebranded as the vegan publisher. So my website is now mm -hmm. the vegan. Talk about, you know, nailing your colors to the mass, you know, and now I really don't care. It's a case of, if that bothers you that I'm vegan, that's your problem. That's not my problem. The people who want to work with me will be proud of the fact that not only am I vegan, my entire operation is now vegan. I only hire vegan editors, ghostwriters, designers, formatters. Even my IT team, my website was designed by a vegan company. Um, even my hosting. So if you go on my website and you, you spend some time on my hosting, um, my hosting is a green hosting provider. So trees are planted every single time someone comes to my website and downloads things or, you know, and I'm even working at the moment with a green payments provider. I haven't started that yet because they're still doing it. Um, mm -hmm. So they're going to replace my Stripe payment system. Uh, which means as soon as you buy anything from me, trees are planted somewhere. So I'm proud of the fact that I veganized my website, my team, my entire operations. If that bothers somebody, that's their problem. That's not mine. But you see, I never would have thought my business would have gone in this direction. When my yeah. book came out in, in March of last year, you know, I was happy as a vegan, but I never thought of it as part of my business. And then one short year later, I've now rebranded as the vegan publisher. So this is what I mean. When you put a book out there, not only does it open the doors that you wanted to open, it opens doors for you that you don't even know existed. I had no idea there was this huge opportunity for me to really 
become the vegan publisher for vegan and ethical experts and influencers and entrepreneurs. I had no idea this time last year, mm -hmm. which is why I've now created the second edition of my book, because people are now getting in touch with me, lots of vegans, lots of nonprofit directors wanting to write a book. And then they go and get my book on Amazon. And there's no mention of my veganism. So they're sending me messages going, hey, we know you're a vegan. We know you're a proud vegan, but your book doesn't say anything about it at all. It's aimed at the general entrepreneurial influencer market. What gives? And that's when I realized I needed to write a second edition of my book designed for vegan and plant-based and ethical entrepreneurs and experts, which is why I've created the second edition that's coming out in a few weeks time. That's so cool. That's And that's good to know too, because I wrote a book and a lot has happened for me as well uh, within me. I've evolved a lot and it's good to know that even though you put something out there, you can like refresh it and make it anew and, and put it back out there to the masses. So I think that's awesome. I Some of the folks that we um, interviewed on the summit, right? Some of the food entrepreneurs doing great work, um, you know, showcase their expertise. And really the, the whole point of that summit was to show the diversity in the raw food movement because it's not really uplifted a lot. And what I've noticed and realized is that there is a dearth of culturally relevant uh, raw vegan meals out there. So, um, you know, I know folks are sitting with that inspiration to write something and put something out, uh, especially for the community. Um, but how does one go about financing all the promotional things? You know, like as you're planning out writing your book, there you want it to be successful right so part of yeah. the success of it is the promotion and the marketing that's needed uh once the book is is ready to be out there to in the world so like how do you finance that because that's a huge obstacle for folks it, it can be um and you're right in this it really it, in fact i would say unfairly sometimes what you do with your book counts more than what's in your book i've seen some fantastic books just languishing on Amazon because either the author didn't have the money or the know-how to promote or they just couldn't be bothered to promote. They just had this misconstrued idea that you can just stick something on Amazon and suddenly the world will stop turning and think you're amazing. Unfortunately, that day doesn't happen. <laughs> I, I thought I'm that would happen. <laughs> yeah, that was I'm me. <laughs> people, I meet people every week, Samantha, who just genuinely... Either they just thought that, so there's an, you know, or sometimes I feel maybe some other book consultants out there fed them the dream. There are, you know, book consultants out there who will just say whatever, you know, because all they really care about is you, they just want you to hire them and give them money. So they write about what happens after the book is really none of their business, you mm -hmm. know? But even though as a book consultant myself, it's none of my business what you do with your book. But I feel a book that isn't leveraged correctly, it just makes me feel sad because I know how much effort I went into making sure that book is published correctly and also how much that author went through with me to get this book to this incredibly professional standard. So I make it my business to know that all of my authors are aware of exactly how they're going to leverage their book because that really is key. Like I said, I've seen some amazing books languishing on Amazon because they haven't been leveraged. And I've also seen, uh, seen some very mediocre books. That's me being very kind there, because I won't say the word. Some of them are terrible. And yet the <laughs> book has done incredible things for their author because yeah. their author was hell bent on leveraging the book as much as possible. So sometimes, it, you know, that old saying, it's not what you've got, it's what you do with it that counts, is very, very true. Now, regarding how to leverage a book, that is the subject of my book. So, I know we don't have hours and hours on here, Samantha, so I would say, you know, the best way to, to find out how to leverage your book or how to get it out there to the masses is to actually go and read my book. So my book is all case study based. It's based on seven of my previous clients. And it's all about what they did with their books, because I think that is so key. Like I said, that could be even more important than you writing your book. It's what you do with it that counts. So 
I want to be sure with all of my authors when they first come to me, I will only work with people who I know have a master plan. That's why I call it, my book is called The Freedom Master Plan. I almost want to see a plan of what they're going to do with their book before we even start the book. That way I feel assured that this person isn't just wasting their time and their energy and money creating a beautiful book that's just going to sit there on Amazon and do nothing for them. It is what you do w with it that counts. Mm -hmm. And I will say there is there's something I can I can reveal a little bit here, but we don't have a huge amount of time. So I would say go and get my book on the 20th of May and it will answer all that question for you. How, what do you do with a book? By the time you've read my book, my goal is that when you get to the end of my book, either you will have a plan of exactly what you're going to do with the book so you can cherry pick the strategies that fit your particular business. You've got seven people in there who've, um, you know, there's 30 plus strategies in there. Not all of them are going to fit your business, but there will be some that do fit your business. And you can almost just jot down the ones that will fit your business and you'll know exactly what to do with your book. So go and get the book. What I will reveal today is the, what the main question you should ask yourself is, are you wanting the book to make money for you, as in the book is the actual business, or do you want the book to gain you business elsewhere, as in in terms of clients, product sales, that sort of thing? And that is a key question. That's probably the first question I ask anybody who wants to work with me, because depending on how you answer that, not only will it reveal what goes into your book, it reveals exactly what your marketing strategy should be. So if you say to me, well, I want this book to be a source of revenue for me, then what I see that as is someone who wants to make money with the book. So therefore they need to sell an awful number of copies of the book. Because if you think about it, the average book, a Kindle book, you'll struggle to charge more than $5. For a paperback, you can you can expect a little bit more because people expect that because you're printing it and it's a tangible thing coming out to, into the mail um, and ending you know on your doorstep. So, but even then, you're probably looking about ten dollars, so maybe fifteen dollars, twenty dollars or more. Then people start you know they start complaining again, saying why is it costing that much? So think of how many you need to sell after you've paid Amazon for their platform fees, and you've paid all the different fees associated, you're only gonna be making, I don't know, maybe three to $6 per tangible book. And on a Kindle, you'll struggle to make a dollar per book. So you have to make an awful lot of them. So then what you need to look into is, are you willing to pay for things like Amazon adverts? Are you willing to pay for things like Google adverts or social media adverts, such as Facebook adverts? You know, it's it's all about thinking ahead and thinking about how you're going to get that level of volume to your book. Mm -hmm. If you answer to me that, no, I'm not really bothered about making money from my book. It's all about attracting the right people into my business. So the right clients, right strategic partners, uh, getting, you know, influential podcast hosts to want you to, to be interviewed by them and um, getting asked to speak at summits, maybe even getting paid um, speaking opportunities, then that person I know, okay, that person, they don't really, they shouldn't be going down the, the paid adverts route and that kind of thing. Not yet. Anyway, what they need to do is leverage the book and get it into the hands of the right people. So now we're in the quality over quantity business. Can you see, does that make sense? Am I making sense there, Samantha? It's all about, yeah. I would say for an author, your road kind of forks into two directions. And you have on the one hand, you have the, the quality business, which is getting your book into the hands of the right people. So they become clients, they become strategic partners, they become affiliates, and um, maybe even future business partners. That's that road you're traveling down. Or if you're looking at the volume business, as in you literally want to make money from your, your book, then you need to look at things like adverts, you need to look at like how you're going to get that volume of people looking at your book and buying it. So it's be, it's all about being very strategic. And I, I'm always amazed how many authors embark on this journey without even thinking of these things. 
You know, my clients, these are the these are some of the first things they think of. They come to me expecting me to talk about their book. They're so excited. It's like, yes, I've got I want to talk to you about, you know, what my book is going to be about. And I always say, stop. That's the next consultation. This first consulting, um, this first consulting session that we've got, we're actually going to talk about what you're going to do with your book. And they're always very, very surprised because they think of in their head, you kind of think of a linear journey and you think of plan the book, then write the book, then the book gets edited and it gets formatted and designed and published. And then comes, what am I going to do with the book? So, and then they meet me and it's completely topsy-turvy. It's the other way around. Mm -hmm. We start discussing what they're going to do with their book before we even start discussing the topic of the book. But the reason why I do that is when you have the end goal in mind, you're not going to get lost. What a lot of authors do is they get to publishing their book and now they're thinking, oh, what am I going to do with this book? And that's why there's so many great books languishing on Amazon because people are, haven't really answered that question, what am I going to do with the book before they wrote it? Yeah. Whereas if you do that first, you're not going to get lost. You're going to know exactly what you're going to do with your book once you publish it. Yeah. Yeah. I love that because like um, you, like you said, you can write the perfect book and no one's reading it. It's just like when you start a business, it doesn't matter how great your product is, you know, whatever it is you're selling, if no one knows about it, you're not going to, you know, sustain. Like that's what happens to a lot of restaurants out there, you know, that was pre-pandemic, you know. Now we're dealing with just trying to get yeah. folks back in and uh, feeling more comfortable. So I think this is a really great opportunity to just kind of lift your voice. Why why this lifestyle is even more important now than ever. Like it's always been important, but now it's so critical and crucial. And a book is a great platform, like a launching pad to just like amplify that message. So I wanna show folks again um, your book the Freedom Master Plan. So you can go to the freedommasterplan.com to get this book on May 20th when the uh, second release, uh, the second edition is released. Um, anything else that, you know, Metali folks should know about um, as they're going about planning out, you know, their book? I'm pretty sure your book covers like everything that they could possibly need but i know like from the financing part you talked about you know that you talk about how they can leverage the book i'm sure there's some tips in there for folks who have a really small budget <laughs> right yeah well like i said if you are in the quality over quantity budget then uh, sorry qu quality quality over quantity version of the book yeah then what, what a lot of my students do is they're not spending all that much money on marketing because what they're doing is they're leveraging their book within their business already. So I, I think it's a difference between the book itself being a business in its own right, or whether you want the book to be a, a very clever sales and marketing tool for your existing business. Mm -hmm. So what a lot of my, in fact, let me use my, let me use myself as an example. So what I tend to do now when anybody contacts me and they say they're interested in writing a book, I usually just assess them first just to see, you know, because there's a lot of people say they want to write a book, but you know, they're never going to write a book. <laughs> so, you know, you want to make sure it's someone who's serious, who really, you know, understand that this is an endeavor and they are willing to put themselves into this and really go for it. But once I've assessed that, I usually send them a copy of my book, The Freedom Mass Band. And the reason why I do that is, first of all, it proves to me, it usually sorts the wheat from the chaff people who are really serious and people aren't because mm -hmm. people who are really serious about writing a book they end up reading my book even if they don't if they, even if they're too busy to read all of it they read some of it and get an understanding mm -hmm. they want to be absolutely sure that is this the right person for me is this the right book consultant for me but what it's showing me is this person a is able and willing to take instruction and b is willing to put effort in because I will, someone like me will make your author journey as easy as possible. But I'm not going to do the work for you. <laughs> you know, you still need to write the book. Yeah. So, you know, this isn't a, oh, I'll just turn up and then suddenly a few weeks later, a book magically happens. That's not going to happen. We, there still needs to be effort put in from you. So if you can't even put in a small amount of effort 
just to read some of my book, I already have an understanding of the kind of person you are. You're going to be a nightmare client. You're going to be one of these people that, we, and we've all had them, especially yeah. if you're a coach consultant. We've all had those clients where you just think, oh my God, they're sucking the life out of me. And you almost feel like you have to drag them yourself to the finishing line. Mm-hmm. And you end up thinking, gosh, the money wasn't worth it. It really wasn't worth <laughs> it paid me it wasn't worth the amount of effort I had to put into that person I now use my book as a way to sift out those nightmare clients because I know if you can't even put just an hour just to read some of my book are you really going to be able to find the time and the energy to write a book are you really going to so I use it as a way to to you know to sift out the bad clients and keep the good clients. But what also happens is my book is my own salesperson. Because what happens is people read the book and they become even more invested in me. And most of the times when people come and speak to me after they've read my book, or at least some of my book, they usually already been pre-sold to me. So they're already like, I think you're great. I love what you're doing. I want to say, I want to be your next success story. The next time you write the Freedom Mass Plan, I want to be featured in your book <laughs> in the way you're featuring your previous clients. And so, you know, it's all their stories and what they've done with their books. And now they've built these huge brands now. And, you know, and they want to work with me. It makes my life so much easier. When I get on a sales call, I jokingly don't even call them sales calls now because I don't feel like I'm selling on them. They, they're already pre sold to me. And now it's more a case of just dotting the I's and crossing the T's and making sure we're a right fit personality wise. And then that's it. And then they just sign on the dotted line. So that's one way I've now increased my conversions. I spend less time on sales calls, first of all, because all the time wasters are gone. And the people that I do speak to, I think my conversion rates are somewhere between 60 to 70%. So around six to seven out of 10 people that I speak to end up becoming my clients. Mm -hmm. Now imagine if you had that kind of, you know, conversion rates. Think of like, you know, having 60 to 70% conversion rates and also having fewer sales calls, you know? So that's, that's just one way. This is what I'm talking about, about how you fund it. It really depends on how you're gonna be using your book. If you're gonna be using your book to get more clients, to get strategic partners, I'm now partnered with Katrina Fox from Vegan Business Media and also with Kathleen Gage from Vegan Visibility. These two are, Katrina Fox is a real titan within the vegan world. You know, she really understands vegan media and publications and also has links with several journalists in mainstream media as well. Um, And then you have um, Kathleen Gage, who's very similar to me in that she's only come into the vegan world in the last year or so, even though she's been vegan for a number of years. Mm -hmm. Um, But she has over 20 years plus experience of online marketing. There is literally no way these two titans would be interested in working with little old me this time last year. You know, before I I was an unknown, they would have just thought, who's this woman in this city I've never heard of in the northeast of England. My book put me on the map Mm -hmm. and it just made me okay, we need to work with this lady. So that's where the money is. It's not the money from the book. I think since last year, I think I checked my Amazon account and I think I've now made just over $7,000 in book sales. Uh-huh. which I don't know about you. I can't live in, on $7,000 in a year. <laughs> but it's not I, too I, bad. <laughs> it's not too bad. It's not too bad, but you couldn't live on that. Can you if right. that, imagine if that was a real, if I thought of it as a revenue stream, I'd mm-hmm. be disappointed. I'd be thinking, gosh, for all the amount of, amount of effort I put in. Yeah. I think it costs me a roundabout in editors and formatters and design fees. It cost me around about four thousand, four and a half thousand dollars. So really, I've only made three and a half. No, that's two and a half. My arithmetic is terrible. This is why I'm a writer. <laughs> that's two and a half thousand dollars. That's nothing. That's absolutely nothing. But if you now count how many new clients I've got, I've got this uh, amazing, amazing strategic partnership now with Kathleen and Katrina. We're now creating products uh, we're now going to become called the vegan dream team because what we're now doing is creating a program where 
you get an all-in service as an author. So I'm your book publisher. I help you get the book out of you and, and published. But then Katrina can do all the publicity for it. And Kathleen can do all the online marketing for it. So you almost have like a, a one-stop vegan shop for vegan authors <laughs> now. So this is just very, very new. I mean, I'm kind of almost announcing this year. Uh, yeah. But this literally only came about in the last week or so. And we're now masterminding it and putting it together. And so if anyone's interested in that, get in touch with me and I'll get, you know, you can meet um, all three of us. Um, if you look at the money that's coming from that, it's now six figures already. But in mm -hmm. book sales, it's $7,000. It's nothing. So it's all about thinking where you're wanting the money to come from. If you're wanting the money to come from books, it can be done. But now you need to really think about well, how you're going to get the volume of people looking at your book. And yeah. you will have to think about having quite an extensive budget when it comes to Amazon adverts or doing some sort of publicity. Whereas if you focus more on I'm using this book to get clients, to get customers, to get strategic partners, to get business partners, to get media attention, it doesn't cost you much money at all. It's more just using your book as a, a sales and marketing tool for your existing business. Mm -hmm. So it's all about being strategic. Now, like I said, I can go on for hours about this, but that is the premise of my book. So I would say anyone who's interested in this, anyone who's thinking, well, this sounds interesting, but I really don't have a clue how I would leverage a book like that in my business, like how I would utilize it, go and read my book. I always say with anybody who's reading my book, just keep a, a, a notepad and pen next to you while you're reading it and as you're reading through the case studies and the stories anything sparks up a little bit of inspiration where you just think oh i could do that in my business that would fit how i do my write it down because you it's amazing how things fall out of your head so you need to write things down so you don't forget it but write it down i've had so many people email me and they and they've even they've even sent me a you know just a a picture on their phone of their their notepad where they've scribbled down notes and said look i've got six strategies now and i know exactly what i'm going to do with my book and that just warms my heart i just think oh my god that is another author who's not going to do the whole feeling terrible about themselves you know the whole failed author syndrome because they just see their book and they know how much time and effort how much blood sweat and tears they put into this book and it's just languishing at Amazon, hardly anybody knows about it. And it just makes me feel so happy when some of those authors are then sending me a snapshot of their notepad because they've written down a master plan now of what they're gonna do with their book. That's my goal, whether you're an existing author or you haven't even written your book yet, but you just want to know what, you're gonna, what you could do, real world scenario, what you can do with your book. Not pie in the sky, you're just gonna stick your book on Amazon and suddenly you're going to become the next E.L. James and a Hollywood movie is going to be amazing. <laughs> and all that nonsense that other people might, you know, fill your head with dreams. Real world strategies and tactics that mm -hmm. my clients have used in the real world and made an incredible return on their investment. That's all in my book. So, you know, my goal is by the end of it, you have a master plan. Yeah. And we know that what we need right now is, are more examples of folks overcoming some of the challenges we see the majority of the folks oh, in our community yeah. are dealing with obesity, type two diabetes and getting healthy, you know, cleaning up their cardiovascular system and things like this, being those examples to encourage other people to create change, you know, within their own lives, their family and their community, it can have ripple effects. And I know like I've heard from folks who've read the introduction to my book um, on how powerful it was for them, how much they can relate to me and my experience. And so it like, I, I know it was a very cathartic experience for me to write that, you know, about like why, you know, the death of my grandma watching that, like her whole journey, just being with her on her, you know, dealing with type two diabetes and then sharing that with the world and having people reflect back to me that, you know, they also had this situation in their family. I mean, it's it's really an amazing experience to really step out as a leader and create change in this way. 
Um, so thank you, Mitali. I'm going to post the book again. Folks, go to the Freedom Master Plan and get yourself this book. You know, over here at the Raw Food Meal Planner, we love plants. Um, <laughs> so I just... One of my, I was going to say, well, I should mention one of my students because you just kind of inspired me there talking about, you know, really stepping out uh, and being a leader and showing people the healthy way to eat. It's not just about animal rights. It's not just about the environment and sustainability. It's about you and your family. Like, yeah. You know, you're, that, that makes my heart just crunched a little bit when you said that, you know, what your grandmother went through with type 2 diabetes. And the sad thing is type 2 diabetes is now being proven that it's not just a consequence of getting older. You know, you don't have to get type 2 diabetes. It's completely lifestyle determined. And we need to become more plant-based because we shouldn't be getting type 2 diabetes. It's not a normal consequence of getting older. One of my authors, she published her book just a few weeks ago, um, Bobby Judicelli, who's based in the States. Uh, and she's whole food plant-based. And her book, I, I mean, I'm so proud to have published this book for her um, because it was something that I never even heard of. So we all are very aware that becoming plant-based is good for physical health. But the idea that becoming plant-based is good for mental health is something I've never heard of. Now, Bobby has had a 40 plus year battle with anorexia and bulimia. And she really mm. puts, you know, puts she wears a heart on her sleeve on this book and she's already had so many people just like you said reach out and say oh my god i've gone through this and just relate to her and her book is all about how the only way she was able to beat her demons and stop starving herself or you know making herself sick to stay slim is by becoming plant-based so that's a whole wow. new avenue you know the fact that becoming plant-based isn't just wonderful for your physical health but it's for your mental health as well. Now she doesn't calorie count anymore. She's at a safe weight where she's not too skinny and she's not obese. She's that perfect weight. And she can eat whatever she wants now without that demon talking to her and saying, oh, you're, you're fat, you need to purge or you need to not eat that. Uh, and, you know, she's now going to, I'm so proud of this book because there's so many women and increasing, increasingly men as well are now under that pressure to mm -hmm. look a certain way. So many people are suffering in silence because of this. And to get that message that stop counting calories, stop purging, stop starving yourself, all you need to do to get to your ideal weight and stay in your ideal weight is to eat whole food plant-based. That's such a powerful message. So I think anybody, if you are in this game, not just for profits, which you won't be. If you're vegan or plant-based <laughs> or green, then certainly you, I already know, you don't even have to tell me, you're not in it just for the money. You're in it to make this world a better place for humans, for animals, for the environment. You're in it to make, better, uh, make it a better place. You know, as my subtitle says, put your mission, your movement and your message on the map by writing a book, because you can get your message out to exponentially more people than you are now. Think of the effect you will have on the world if you can have a hundred times more people looking at what you do and understanding what you do and affecting them by what you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Sorry, that's good, yeah, but I went to a bit of a soapbox there. You just kind of inspired me when you talked to my yeah. grandma. I was like, I love oh that story God. though because um, I've never heard that addressed before. Actually, I've heard the mental health piece, but not specifically around eating disorders and how yeah. plant based has you know helped or been a part of that journey, which is a great. Um, area to really dig into so thank you so much for mentioning that i'm gonna have to research her and find her book i'll uh, send you the link <laughs> for a book if you want to add this to the show notes and everything yeah I love it, especially because your audience is sort of food and health plant-based i think they're yeah. very very interested in, in bobby's book and she's now started a company with her eldest son where they make whole food plant-based breakfast meals and um, so it's she's doing and this is so this is it them. it's like i think like the perfect synergy for, especially for food entrepreneurs you know of course maybe i'm a little biased i i owned a raw vegan restaurant before but i feel like having a brick and mortar place where folks can gather and having a coaching business to just increase your profit margins having a book to leverage your platform right so you can be seen as a leader i mean we see like some amazing names in the game 
name at least, you know, mentors that I consider mentors or great inspirations in this space, one of them being Karen Calabrese, who did all of these things. I mean, she didn't really do um, health coaching, but she did a lot of workshops and things, which is part of that health coaching model. So it's a model that works. Um, And we need to keep it moving forward. (laughs) We need to keep it moving forward and like have it in our pockets because veganism is great, but healthy veganism is is way better. Right. We need people to live long, healthy lives. So I think veganism for humans needs to become like a motto. You know, there's a belief that. (laughs) veganism is like for animals and for the environment and it is i mean i came in it for the animals but then while i'm in it i started to learn about veganism for the environment and then i understood how veganism is great for humans not just humans as in their health and their mental health but also you know food and the big food companies are using food and our food systems to you know for example in slaughterhouses it's usually immigrants and ex-prison prisoners who are working in them. So they're being exploited. They're the two, I didn't used to think of that. I used to be a bit of a, just thinking about the animals. So mm-hmm. all those people who worked in slaughterhouses, they were evil because they were the ones who were doing the slaughtering and the animals are the poor victims. Now I realize how wrong I was. Those people are as much a victim as the poor animal that's being slaughtered, you know? And it's, it's understanding that veganism is loving humans as well it's not just loving the environment and animals it's loving humans and we just need to be more loving to each other we really really it is it's my mission that i want to have an army of vegan authors whether that's food based whether they're talking about animal advocacy whether they're talking about sustainability environment it's a many pronged attack to make this world vegan it's mm-hmm. not just one way we're going to do it. So my, you know, join my army. I want a massive army of vegan authors just taking over the world to the point where everybody will have to listen and they just have to become vegan. Yeah. Because it'd be silly not to. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mitali. Every time I talk to you, I want to write another book. Honestly, you are just, <laughs> I just love your energy. Yes. So thank you so much for joining us. And everyone, as you can see on the screen, go to the Freedom Master Plan. The new edition drops on Friday, May 20th. And thanks again, Mitali. Thank you for having me.